Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking all about token images. The focus of the video will be on the top-down token rather than the circle token, but a lot of the methods we talk about today can also be applied to the circle tokens as well. In today's video we'll be talking about where to find the tokens, how to apply them quickly in your game to different creatures, as well as we'll talk about the wild card feature and how to have what you would call multi-sided tokens where you can choose different images for one token. Let's go ahead and look first at this website. This is Forgotten Adventures. They have a Patreon where you can pay as low as $1 a month and by paying that fee you gain access to all of these assets here as well as a ton of other map making assets as well. I am logged in currently on my Patreon account, so if I go to any of these bundles and after it loads up, we will see I can download the bundle part 1, part 2, and this contains 764 token images just from this one alone. So this is a quick way if you want to gain a bunch of token images all at once, subscribe to their Patreon and take a look at their website. So what I will be doing first is I will download all of the bundles I want, all the token images I want, and I'll be putting them all in the same folder. And then after I have them all in the same folder, we'll talk about what we need to do next. When you are finished, it will look something like this. I have a folder just titled All Tokens. In order to quickly put them all together, all I did was I searched .png. Because when you download them, they'll be separated out by like CR or by type, which is not what you want. From this point forward, you can go back into Foundry and load up your modules. We'll be using two modules in this video. The first one is Compendium Image Mapper. The second one is Token HUD Wildcard. This one will let us have our multi-sided tokens where we can have multiple images very quickly accessible for each of our tokens. I am in my world now and the first thing I want to do after enabling the modules is go to my Compendium. I am going to make a copy of the Monsters SRD Compendium. The reason I need to make a copy is because, well, two things. I don't really want to edit the base folder. And also, if I ever update my rule set, which I should update my rule set, all of these compendiums will be overwritten. So you need to make a copy of it in order to edit it freely. So just right click, duplicate compendium, and then give it a unique name. It is worth noting I am doing this for the Monsters SRD. But if you have monsters imported from elsewhere, say the D&D Beyond importer, you could use it just the same. All right, and then we'll go ahead and press yes. And then we should see when we search now, we have our copy right there. So if you've enabled the module correctly, you should see at the bottom compendium mapper. Go ahead and click that. When it opens up, you want to select the compendium you want to edit. Make sure you select the copy rather than the original. Here, map images to portrait or token. We want to start off with a token, but if you want them to be the same image, you can go over to portrait afterwards. And then only map entries that have no default image. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. Basically, if you've customized this compendium beforehand, you can go ahead and uncheck this box. And then here, decide what you want to do. Do you want them to automatically map or do you want to do a lot of the manual process on your own? And then here, you have basically the same thing. And you can change these ratios. I wouldn't set them too low because then you might end up with uh, some token images that don't really match the token at all. And then the last step is you want to click select and then select any image within that folder that we had earlier that has all of our token images in it. And then we are done and we can go ahead and start the mapping process. Now we just press start mapping and let it go. It can take a while and also depending on your settings here, you may end up having to make a lot of choices. Just be patient and let it run through. A lot of the choices you have to make will look like this. If it doesn't really matter to you too much which color variation you end up picking, you can just choose randomly instead of manually. And then after the fact, you can go through and make sure there aren't really any major mistakes. As we saw with the Frost Giant, a lot of the token images have a bunch of different variations, and sometimes when you create a new token, you don't always want them to look the same. This is really easy to set up in Core Foundry using the Wildcard feature, and then we're going to take it a step further today using a different module, the Wildcard HUD as previously mentioned. To use the Wildcard feature, 
go to the actor you want to change, go to the token at the top, go to image, and then here where we have token image path, we're going to do two things. First, click randomize wildcard images, and then here we need to change this line. If we change it so that we just had an asterisk here, it would take any token from this folder and put it on to our actor, which is not what we want. We only want the variations for the frost giant. Instead, we want to make a different change. If we look at all of these files, everything is the same except the number. So all you need to do for the wild card for any of these tokens, if they're provided by Forgotten Adventures, is take away this last line here and then put an asterisk. And then you're done. You can go ahead and update the token. And now whenever you bring this actor in, it'll pull any of these variations if they end in the underscore and then the number. Let's test it out. So now if I bring my frost giant onto the scene, it's gonna get a little bit cluttered, but we can see different variations being created, as well as because of wildcard HUD, if I click the token and go here, I can see all of the possible variations pop up and I can change with a single click. Now this might not only be useful for different color variations, but also for a character. If you have formal wear versus combat wear versus the character on a horse, you can get the idea. So we can see how we can put all this together and create different token images very simply. As a final note with Wildcard HUD, if you want all the features of the wildcard but don't want to randomize when the actor is brought in, you can have a default image set here at the bottom. One other module you may consider using if you are using these top-down tokens is About Face. In the past, About Face hasn't worked with Token Attacher, but from what I can tell now from my very basic tests, it seems to be functioning as expected. But go ahead and test it out in your own world and see how it works for you. All right, that is where we're going to wrap things up for today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'm happy to help out as much as I can. Thanks, everyone.